Good morning and welcome to week 10 of sleep medicine and respiratory care. We're on unit 10 as I stated and this week we're going to cover 10 objectives inclu included in the sleep central sleep apnea and hypoventilation syndromes. So we'll get started with the next slide. Let's start with the objectives for unit 10 of central sleep apnea and hypoventilation syndrome. The first four are listed on this slide and they include define and explain what is central sleep apnea syndrome, classify and explain central sleep apnea syndrome, explain the pathophysiology of central sleep apnea, and explain the types of hypocapnic central sleep apnea syndrome. The next three objectives are listed on this slide, and they include explain in detail the polyosinographic changes pathophysiology and treatment of chain stokes breathing with central sleep apnea, define complex sleep apnea, explain the incidence, pathophysiology, poly polysomnography findings, and treatment of complex sleep apnea. The last three objectives for Unit 10 are listed on this slide, and they include explain what is high altitude periodic breathing and explain its pathophysiology, diagnosis, and treatment. Explain in detail about hypercapnic central sleep apnea and hypoventilation syndromes not due to lung disease and distinguish, distinguish between obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. Our first objective is to define and explain what is central sleep apnea syndromes. Let's first define central sleep apnea. It is, is defined as a disorder of decreased breathing rate and depth, particularly during sleep due to a transient reduction or withdrawal of central neural output to the respiratory muscles, the diaphragm and intercostal muscles. It is described as an inter interruption of airflow for 10 seconds or more during sleep, which can cause significant oxygen desaturation. Severe um, central apnea sleep apnea have 30 or more of these episodes per hour. Mild central sleep apnea stop, re stop readings for more than five times per hour. In central sleep apnea, the airway is not obstructed, but the breathing reflex is periodically interrupted. There's no chest or no abdom abdominal movement, reactive movements. Studies have shown that the that heart flare patients often have sleep apnea and, and those with central sleep apnea are more likely to develop abnormal and dangerous heart rhythms. There are two categories of disorders that cause the central nervous system, respiratory control system to decrease output to the respiratory muscles. They are disorders that cause defects in the system itself, central sleep apnea with abnormal respiratory control system or disorders outside the system that cause a normal system to reduce its output, central sleep apnea with normal respiratory control system. Central sleep apnea is primar primarily idiopathic or secondary. Secondary includes central sleep apnea associated with chain stokes breathing, a medical condition, a drug or a substance, or high altitude periodic breathing. Central sleep apnea associated with chain stokes breathing is common among patients who have heart failure or have, or have had a stroke. A central sleep apnea is less common than obstructive sleep apnea. Central sleep apnea may also occur with individual within an individual that has obstructive apneas. Clinicians may struggle to determine if central sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea is a principal problem, or if the combination of the two disorders may need therapy. Central sleep apnea does not have any single cause as a number of syndromes may result in it. Patients with central sleep apnea have similar symptoms to patients with, with obstructive sleep apnea and the two disorders often coexist. We're going to move on to the next objective, objective number two on your agenda or your syllabus is to classify and explain central sleep apnea syndromes. The third edition of the IS, ICSD-3 has divided central sleep apnea syndromes into several categories based on, the, on distinct clinical and polysomnographic features. 
There is primary central sleep apnea. There's central sleep apnea with chain stokes breathing. There's central sleep apnea due to a medical disorder without chain stokes breathing. There's central sleep apnea due to a periodic high altitude breathing and central sleep apnea due to a medication or substance. There's also treatment emergent central sleep apnea or complex sleep apnea. Hypoventilation and hyperventilation can result in central apnea and each acts through a distinct pathophysiological pathway. The degree of alveolar ventilation often serves as a basis for the alternate classification of central sleep apnea. Patients with heart failure are often hyper, hypercapnic during wakefulness and have increased propensity to develop hyperventilation related central sleep apnea. Hypoventilation related central sleep apnea commonly occurs in neuromuscular diseases and over use of medications with side effects of central nervous systems or cervical spinal cord injury and structural abnormalities affecting pulmonary dynamics. As stated on the earlier slide, the degree of alveolar ventilation often serves as a basis for the alternate classification of central sleep apnea. There can be an increased chemoresponsiveness in the elderly population and they are prone to develop central apnea particularly during the non-rapid eye movement. Compared to, to men, women are less susceptible and often require a larger magnitude of hypocapnia to develop central apnea. Okay, let's move on to the next objective. Number three, explain the pathophysiology of CSA syndromes. Central sleep apnea is common in the adult population and less than 10% of patients refer to the sleep laboratories. It is believed to result from high gain ventilatory control, increased hypercapnic responsiveness, combined with prolonged circulation time. <clears throat> this combination leads to an unstable ventilatory control and this particular pattern of periodic breathing. Unstable ventilatory control in patients with central sleep respirations and central sleep apnea can promote obstructive events, apneas and hypopneas in the individual. Central nervous system depressants such as narcotics, hypnotic medications, alcohol, and muscle relaxants can play a role in central sleep apnea. Many individuals taking such medications have a high incidence of already heart disease. High altitude can similarly produce central sleep apnea physiology. The effect of central sleep apnea is recurrent and and or persistent hypoxia may lead to increased short term or and long term cardiovascular disease such as congestive heart failure, coronary artery disease, left or right ventricular dysfunction, and a number of cardiac dysrhythmias. Central sleep apnea is less common form of sleep apnea and occurs when your brain falls, fails to send signals to your breathing muscles. There is no effort to breathe. You are awakened with shortness of breath or have a difficult time going to sleep or staying asleep. Most common symptoms of OSA and CSA include loud snoring, episode in which you stop breathing during sleep would be reported by another person, gasping for air during sleep, awakening with a dry mouth, morning headache, difficult staying asleep, excessive daytime sleepiness, difficult in paying, in paying attention while awake and irritability. Okay, we're gonna go to the next objective, which is explain the types of hypocapnic central sleep apnea syndromes. First of all, we're gonna categorize them. There is neurologic, which can exist of panic disorder, pain, or central neurogenic hyperventilation, such is developed with meningitis, encephalitis, trauma, or stroke. There's toxicology or medication type, and they can include the following medications, psilocytes, topamate, theophylline or caffeine, nicotine, vega agonist, and progesterone. Endocrine uh, system, you can have thyroid toxicis, Pregnancy, psoriasis, uh, psoriasis is common of uh, persistent respiratory alkalosis that is often encountered among intubated patients, and sepsis, 
respiratory alkalosis may be an early sign of sepsis, preceding hypoxemia or hypertension. Causes of hypocapnia can be a number of things. Under respiratory, it's nearly any pulmonary disease, such as pneumonia, asthma, pulmonary edema, pulmonary embolism, pneumothorax. Hypoxemia itself can stimulate the respiratory drive, causing hypocapnia. Pulmonary irritation can also drive dyspnea and increase in ventilations. You may look for an abnormal chest x-ray, um, and it, still, it may still occur with some respiratory etiologies. Mild cardiac pulmonary edema, pericardial tamponade, asthma, pulmonary embolism, and excessive me me mechanical ventilation among intubated patients. If hypocapnia OSA continues, it may take, taking a good history and physical exam for the cause that remains unclear and to invest, in, in, in to investigate. There's a selectic level, theophylline level, um, uh, theophylline stimulating hormone, liver function tests, beta HCG, evaluation for pulmonary embolism, evaluation for sepsis or neuroimaging, plus or minus a lumbar pack puncture. Consequences of hypocapnia include some neurologic reduced CO2 triggers or, and cerebral vasoconstriction. It is a reduction in intercranial pressure, a reduction in the brain perfusion. There's impending herniation, cerebral hypoperfusion, and with impairment in the ventilation perfusion, and may promote a seizure. Respiratory-wise, hypocapnia will suppress the respiratory drive. Intubations will, with ventilator-induced hypocapnia may cause patient to stop triggering breaths. Uh, global hypocapnia throughout the lung causes bronchoconstriction and attention of hypo, attenuation of hypoxic pulmonary vas vasoconstriction with the impairment in the ventilatory perfusion mismatch. And metabolic, this may uh, promote lactic acidosis, I'm sorry, lactic alkalosis. With hypocapnia, you need to treat any identifiable etiology. There is an increased chemo responsiveness in the elderly population that are prone uh, to develop central apnea, particularly during non-rapid eye movement. Compared to men, women are least susceptible and often take a larger magnitude of hypocapnia to develop central apnea. Pain and agitation uh, need to be properly managed. If the patient is intubated and not, uh, if not triggering reduced ventilatory support, reduce the minute volume. And breathing over a ventilator, then a reduction in ventilator support may be considered. Again, hypoventilation related uh, sleep, central sleep apnea usually occurs in patients with a central nervous system or neuromuscular disorder that directly impairs ventilation, result, resulting in a high CO2 levels, hypercapnia. Rarely patients have uh, an impaired chemoreceptor response to hypercapnia. Um, it's primarily alveolar hypoventilation. Central sleep apnea is a condition characterized by the ventilatory control systems instability and most often with increased responsive to hypercapnia to the instability. Ventilation during sleep, particularly during non-REM sleep, is driven by the arterial PCO2 and leading to a reduced PO2 which can precipitate central apneas. The treatments of central sleep apnea must be individualized to the cause of the ventilatory instability. Idiopathic central sleep apnea often responds to oxygen or acetamolide, acetazomolide. Chate Stokes respiration is best treated with CPAP. Okay, we're gonna move on to objective number five, which is explain in detail the polysomnography changes, pathophysiology, and treatment of chain stokes breathing with central sleep apnea. Chain stokes breathing may be associated with central sleep apnea. Central sleep apnea occurs when the body does not make appropriate respiratory effort during sleep due to the absence of signals from the brain. Central sleep apnea and chain stokes respirations impact respiratory effort in different ways. Common causes are heart failure and stroke. Rare but 
but occurs in 25 to 50 percent people with heart failure, less common in people who have suffered a stroke compared to heart failure. <clears throat> Causes of Shane Stokes respirations. It's less common in people who have suffered stroke compared to those with heart failure, as we already stated. Factors like involvement of the major artery or cardioembolism may increase the risk. Simply put, instability of respiratory control underlies the development of the chain stokes breathing. <clears throat> symptoms of, of chain stokes breathing include the main symptoms is its characteristic crescendo and decrescendo breathing pattern. Mostly occurs during sleep, particularly in stage one and stage two, non-REM sleep, but can occur also occur while awake. People who are are asleep on a sedative medication are unlikely to be aware of their breathing pattern. It may be worse when people sleep in their, on their backs. People have this condition experience at least five apneas or hypopneas at night through the night, or they may experience many, many more. Other symptoms may, in, may be included and are similar to OSA. They are fatigue and excessive daytime sleepiness, difficult or labored breathing, loud snoring, sudden coughing fits, or periodic limb movements during sleep. In addition to heart failure and stroke, change those breathing is associated with <clears throat> arrival at high altitude, brain injury or brain tumor, high intracranial, intracranial pressure, acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema, and is also a clinical sign seen in people who are in the process of dying. Sleep apnea and change Stokes breathing <laughs> are both caused by low respiratory effort and share many of the same symptoms, particularly excessive daytime sleepiness and loud snoring. Central sleep apnea does not cause the chain stokes breathing pattern and the underlying causes of low effort, respiratory effort differs between the two. Diagnosing of chain stokes respirations occurs during a sleep study. Symptoms at, to nighttime chain stokes respiration is similar to OSA and sleep study is important to distinguish the two and to receive the correct treatment. Treatment includes <clears throat> the presence of chain soaks respiration during wake. A wake can indicate a poor prognosis, partially because the breathing pattern can lead to vicious cycle in which low blood oxygen caused by apneas can further damage the heart or cause problems with its rhythm. Left untreated, it can cause changes in carbon dioxide levels that lead to death. It must be treated unless there's they are part of an expected death process. Most important when treating and managing what, what caused it, and nighttime oxygen therapy and CPAP is recommended by the AASM for chain stokes respirations. The mortality rate in people with this condition may be lower among patients using CPAP, while supplemental oxygen appears to improve symptoms and overall quality of life. Okay, we're halfway there. We're ready to start with the next objective, and it is the defined complex sleep apnea. So complex or treatment emergent central sleep apnea it occurs when someone who has previously had, had obstructive sleep apnea and develops central sleep apnea due to the treatment with continuous positive airway pressure. Once the obstructive sleep apnea is identified, the most common and effective treatment is to use the CPAP therapy, which keeps the airway from collapsing or obstructing and resolves the snoring. In some cases, the CPAP may trigger changes in breathing, which results in breath holding or central sleep apnea. Complex sleep apnea occurs with the use of CPAP treatment. Obstructive events resolve with therapy, while central apnea events emerge or persist with therapy. It is common for central sleep apnea to emerge, but may not require an additional intervention beyond time. Complex sleep apnea may be common during the initial treatment period with CPAP or bilevel therapy. It's not explained by the use of medications and are not due to heart failure or stroke. There's a number of arousals from sleep and, and each awakening. High number of arousals from sleep and each waking followed by an episode of post arousal central sleep apnea and more commonly seen in non REM sleep and may improve slightly in stage three or slow wave sleep. Complex sleep apnea is estimated to affect about two to 20% of people as they start using CPAP therapy, may be seen more often in the first or second night of use. It's only persistent with therapy in about 2% of the people. It may be obvious in an initial sleep study. Other times it becomes apparent after the apnea does not resolve with a typical CPAP machine. 
The exact causes of complex sleep apnea are not fully understood. <clears throat> there may be a number of contributors to the condition and not all are due to CPAP therapy. Some individual may be predisposed towards the condition due to instability in their control of breathing. <clears throat> it may, be, may occur more commonly among those with difficulty maintaining sleep, such as with insomnia. In, it seems to be triggered by low carbon dioxide levels in others. If someone has more severe sleep apnea initially with higher apnea hypopnea index or AHI or has more central sleep events noted prior to the treatment, this may increase the risk. It also, may, it also seems to occur more in men. It is interesting to note that other treatments of sleep apnea also seem to increase the risk of developing complex, complex sleep apnea. What are the effects? So generally, complex sleep apnea resolves over time. Some of these people may require alternative uh, to resolve the disorder. Persistent complex sleep apnea with high residual AHI may cause continued sleep fragmentation and oxygen desaturation. It may lead to daytime sleepiness and other long-term health effects. It may be night-to-night -night variability, and some elevation in AHI may be tolerated if the overall response to therapy is favorable. Resolution of complex sleep apnea may depend on addressing the underlying causes. Treatment may involve a combination of interventions, including treatment for any underlying conditions and the use of CPAP or other positive airway pressure modes. Okay, we're going to move on to the next objective listed on your syllabus, which is explain what is high altitude periodic breathing and explain its pathophysiology, diagnosis, and treatment. Central sleep apnea due to high altitude periodic breathing affects about a quarter of the people who ascend to 2,500 meters and almost 100% of those to ascend, who ascend to 4,000 meters or higher. It is characterized by central apneas, periodic breathing, insomnia, and sleep fragmentation. A variety of medications that may be beneficial, including sedative, hypnotics, acetylcholine, tazomamide steroids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. There are ethnic and gender differences in resistance to the effects of high altitude and pregnant women at, at high altitudes tend to have an increase in neonatal complications and are, are at high risk of low birth weight in newborns. At high altitude, the reduced oxygen content of blood induces breathing instability with periods of deep and rapid breathing alternating with central apnea. This breathing pattern is called high altitude periodic breathing. It occurs even in healthy persons at altitudes above 6,000 feet. It may lead to sleep disturbances with frequent awakenings and a feeling of lack of air. Although periodic breathing during sleep at a high altitude occurs almost universally, <clears throat> the likely mechanism and independent effects of altitude and acclimatization have not clearly been reported. Data, data demonstrated a significant relationship between decline in cerebral blood flow at sleep onset and subsequent severity of essential sleep apnea at night. It is suspected that cerebral blood flow would decline during partial acc acclimatization. High altitude insomnia and high altitude periodic breathing are no longer diagnostic categories of the 2014 International Classification of Sleep Disorders, third edition. The current nomenclature is central sleep apnea due to high altitude periodic breathing, which is characterized by cyclic periods of central apnea and hypopnea, usually accompanied by frequent awakenings, poor quality sleep, since the suffocation and fatigue. Okay, hang in there, we're about done. We have a couple more uh, objectives for this agenda this week. So let's go into the next one, which is explain in detail about hypercapnic CSA and hypoventilation syndromes not due to lung disease. 
So non-hypercapnic CSA is usually characterized by periodic breathing pattern, while hypercapnic CSAs is based on hypoventilation. Hyperventilation is the key factor contributing to the development of idiopathic non-hypercapnic central sleep apnea, where left ventricle systolic fun function is normal. ICSA is reported to occur in about 20% of patients with left ventricular dystolic dysfunction in whom elevated pulmonary vascular pressure and, re and resultant increased pulmonary va vagal afferent traffic may contribute to the hyperventilation. The contribution of these two potential mechanisms responsible for hyperventilation seen in the following ICSA was measured. Left ventricle diastolic dysfunction induced pulmonary hypertension and increased peripheral and central hypercapnia ventilatory responses. Idiopathic non-hypercapnic central sleep apnea is likely to be dependent upon raised hypercapnic ventilatory responses and not pulmonary hypertension due to the left ventricular dy diastolic dysfunction. Periodic breathing or non-hypercapnic central sleep apnea is triggered by oscillations, oscillations in respiratory drive induced by hyperventilation during non-rapid eye movement sleep when respiratory control is under a chemically, chemically controlled negative feedback loop. And the most common form of central sleep apnea is seen in subject with congestive systolic heart failure and is termed chain, and is termed chain stokes respirations uh, uh, central sleep apnea. However, central sleep apnea also occurs in the absence of systolic heart failure and is termed idiopathic central sleep apnea. Okay, we're on the last objective for this week. Um, and it includes distinguish between obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. Let's first define them. In review, obstructive sleep apnea is the most common form of sleep apnea. It occurs when there is a functional obstruction in the mouth and or throat. They wake up feeling as though they, they cannot breathe and the lungs work normally and the body still tries to breathe, but it's not possible to get enough air through the upper airway. It can lead to snoring. In review of central sleep apnea, it is a disorder characterized by repetitive cessation or decrease of both airflow and ventilatory effort during sleep. It occurs because brain, the brain does not send proper signals to the muscles that control your breathing. It's less common than obstructive sleep apnea, and the cause is neurolog neurological. It consistently sends a signal to breathe, and, and the person stops breathing. Central sleep apnea can sometimes be idiopathic, which means doctors cannot identify an underlying disease. Symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea first include snoring, choking, gasping for air, excessive daytime sleepiness, morning headache, memory loss, witnessed apneas, dry mouth, nocturia, mood swings, fatigue, and inability to stay awake. Symptoms of central sleep apnea are much the same. They include snoring, choking, gasping for air, excessive daytime sleepiness, morning headache, memory loss, witnessed apneas, dry mouth, nocturia, mood swings, fatigue, and inability to stay awake. Diagnosis of both obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. Early detection and diagnosis can be challenging slowly based on self-reported symptoms of disturbed sleep. Nocturnal PSG is the gold standard uh, diagnostic test in evaluating both OSA and CSA. Diagnosis of treatment emergent CSA requires to have a primary diagnosis of OSA followed by resolution of the obstructive apnea and emergence or persistence of the CSA. Okay, next let's talk about treatment. And let's first talk about obstructive sleep apnea. CPAP is the gold standard, but BiPAP 
can be also used. <clears throat> Position in bed may be helpful. A mouthpiece or an oral device may be helpful. Surgery to include removal of tissues or a removal of tonsils or adenoids. Upper airway stimulation, <clears throat> jaw surgery, a tracheostomy, a nasal surgery, lose weight, exercise, avoid alcohol, and sleep on, this, on your side. In the treatment of central sleep apnea, CPAP is recommended as the first line of therapy. BiPAP can be a viable option in hypercapnic central sleep apnea if unresponsive to CPAP. ASV, a form of BiPAP that provides ventilatory support may be needed. Nocturnal oxygen therapy may be helpful. Unilateral placement of a phrenic nerve stimulus or a respiratory stimulus. Okay, we made it through all 10 objectives for this week in Unit 10. I've li listed the references from uh, this lecture. Um, kind of just touched on base on a lot of it, but um, and um, you can always look up and read more about it. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me. I mean, to email me. And um, I have a good week, and I'll see you next week with Unit 11.